Good evening. We're going to get started. My name is Mary Beth Cook, and I'm the Director of Planning and Zoning, and I'd like to welcome you all to our very first meeting on the update to the Calvert County Zoning Ordinance. Thank you for coming out tonight. I'm glad the rain held off a little bit so you could get here safely. So I'm going to give you some background information, give you some information about how we got here, why we're here, and the process we're going to take to get to the finish line, which is far off in the future, sometime next year. The current Calvert County Comprehensive Plan was adopted in 2019 and amended in 2020 after several years of public meetings, workshops, forums, and it all ended in a public hearing where the Planning Commission recommended adoption and the commissioners, Board of County Commissioners adopted. The Comprehensive Plan is the county's goals and visions, while the zoning ordinance, which we're starting to discuss now, contain the regulations to reach those goals. Under the state land use law, the county's zoning ordinance is required to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. This was staff's starting point to create the draft. The current zoning ordinance version, which is out in draft, is staff's draft based on the adopted comprehensive plan. We are expecting changes to be made based on future work sessions with the Board of County Commissioners, the Planning Commission, and public comments. Again, this is just the beginning. We originally mirrored our process um, as the pro to be like the process that was used for the 2006 zoning ordinance uh, update process. But um, we quickly learned that we were being a little aggressive um, with the schedule and People were pushing back, we listened, we heard comments, and we're not going to rush it. So we've paused, we've regrouped, and presented a new schedule to the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners last night. This schedule is fluid. We expect adjustments to be made as needed along the way. We've reformatted so that public forums will be held before the comments are due, so you'll have time to come to the forums, discuss questions um, with staff, and then you'll have time to formulate your comments. We felt it was important to hold last night's work session and tonight's public forum to give you an overview of the zoning districts to use while you're reviewing this document through the summer. After reviewing and re receiving comments for this and all chapters, this draft will be revised before scheduling a public hearing. Comments can be made up to the time of the public hearing, and we expect that to be sometime in 2024. We do not have a date certain. Staff has prepared a comparison of the existing ordinance and the proposed ordinance because it's been a total update. The chapters aren't the same numbers, and so just so that you can have comparison um, Will did a really good job so f of the chapters that we'll be talking about tonight to show what, where they are in the existing ordinance and where they are in the proposed ordinance so that you have some comparison. This will be up on the website soon. We have given it to CMR and so it should be up anymore, any day now. Staff is also preparing a density study to be used for future work sessions. So while we'll be talking about what is in the draft for density tonight, that's not set in stone. We're going to be doing the study, and we're, we'll be discussing it with the commissioners, the planning commission, and listening to comments that we hear. So we're grouping these meetings and forums by chapters. But you can call at any time with questions or make comments on any chapters. I would try, like to try to keep it to the chapters that we're discussing, but certainly they all are interconnected. So if you have a question and you just don't understand or you need clarification, call us. Staff's always, always available to answer questions. We will also meet with groups. If you have a group, um, we had you sign up this evening, whether you were um, signed up for yourself or a group. So we're going to reach out to those groups who would like to come talk to you. We're also working with communications and media relations on improved advertising for future meetings. Um, we realized that a press release wasn't put out for tonight that will happen in the future. For updates and additional information, please visit our website. There's lots of good information there. And Will's going to be giving you a little tutorial tonight of how to navigate our website. 
and um, I keep saying Will. Will is Will Hager. He is our planner who has been instrumental in um, helping us with this work on the updated zoning ordinance. And he actually created a YouTube video, which is up on our website. So please take advantage of that because it has a lot of good information in it. So after Will does his presentation, um, we're going to open it up so that you know we have plenty of staff here to talk to you, um, ask you questions. They're by topic, so if you have specific questions, feel free to visit all the tables. Feel free to talk to Will or I. There's maps up on the walls. We you know, kind of want this to be interactive. And if there are questions that we can't answer tonight, um, in addition to just general questions that you ask, we're going to be taking those down and creating a frequently asked questions page on the website so that um, maybe you didn't think of a question that someone else did. We're gonna compile all those and put them up on the website for your use. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Will. Okay, thank you, Mary. And I'll just do a, a quick introdu introduction. <laughs> My name is Will Hager and I am a planner with Calvert County Planning and Zoning and I have been helping out with the zoning ordinance update project and uh, before we begin, I'm going to go over a few things. Some of it Mary touched on, but sometimes it, it doesn't hurt to repeat some things. Um, to make a few things clear in regard to the public comment period, uh, the zoning ordinance update schedule and public outreach, the comment period for Articles 3 through 9 and the draft articles in focus tonight will be open until Friday, June 30th. The schedule for work sessions, public forums, and comment periods will be revised, and public comment periods will remain open following public forums. The revised schedule has not yet been updated on the Zoning Ordinance Update website, but it will be soon. But again, like we stressed at the work session yesterday, the schedule, particularly as we get closer to the end of this year and into next year, is tentative, flexible, and subject to future revision. Just a question here. <coughs> so we're hearing about this tonight, a lot of people for the first time, and we're only given until June 30th to give comments on these sections. So we don't want this to be interactive, but Greg, I hear you, and yes, we, we will extend that. I had this, a similar request last night, and we haven't had a chance to change the slides, so yes, we are gonna give you additional time. Does two weeks sound reasonable? Three weeks, what, what do you think? Three. Three weeks? Four. Okay. Four. There's a holiday in there, so. Uh, we're only doing a few chapters, but you know, Will's got a really good presentation, so. Yes, like I said, we're fluid. That's not a hard and fast date. We will change that and it'll be up on the website. Okay, thank you, Mary. And that's a clear demonstration of subject to future revision. Um, so also planning and zoning will be reaching out and meeting with interested county boards and commissions in the coming weeks and months and any organization that is interested in meeting with staff to discuss the draft zoning ordinance update can contact the Department of Planning and Zoning to arrange a meeting. And, and like Mary said, staff is prepared to document that compares the draft articles three through nine with the current ordinance and includes some details that are not included in this presentation due to time constraints. And uh, we are working on having that document available on the zoning ordinance update website very soon, as Mary mentioned. But first, some background information relevant to the creation of the draft zoning map and zoning districts. The comprehensive plan adopted in 2019 and amended in 2022 included the future land use map, which has informed the creation and delineation of zoning districts in the, zoning, in the draft zoning ordinance. The 2022 amendments included reductions in the proposed town center expansion areas, they, and they designated certain areas currently zoned employment center district west of Prince Frederick and south of Lusby as residential or industrial. And as stated in previous presentations, compared to the future land use map in the amended comprehensive plan, there really shouldn't be any major surprises with the draft zoning map. For instance, take a look at the future land use map in this slide. 
you'll see a residential land use category colored in orange around the town center of Prince Frederick. And in the draft zoning, you'll see a residential district colored in orange that is a mirror image of that designated residential land use category from the amended future land use map. There are some differences between the two maps, however, the primary difference being that the future land use map was painted with broad strokes, while the zoning map is more fine and precise with zoning district boundaries for the most part following parcel line boundaries with the goal to avoid split zone parcels as much as possible. And as compared with current zoning, in order to bring the zoning map in line with the comprehensive plan, zoning districts have been redrawn and a few new zoning districts have been created, which we'll be going over in more detail today. One thing you might notice looking at Prince Frederick here is that the town center expansions have not been included in the draft zoning map. The proposed expansions will be addressed at the time those particular town center master plans and zoning ordinances are updated in accordance with the comprehensive plan. So articles four through eight of the draft zoning ordinance contain con descriptive summaries of the purpose and intent of the draft zoning ordinance districts as well as establishing minimum standards for each zoning district, including permissible density, lot area, lot width, and setbacks. For this presentation, we'd like to focus on some of the more substantive differences between the current zoning districts and the proposed draft zoning districts. Article four of the draft zoning ordinance includes a description of the farm and forest district. The Farm and Forest District allows limited development and encompasses existing agriculture and forested areas and is intended to protect and preserve prime farming regions as well as unique or significant environmental features as identified by the presence of large contiguous forested areas, wildlife habitat, and or environmentally sensitive areas. To help accomplish these goals, the clustering of residential subdivisions is proposed to be mandatory on parcels 30 acres or greater in size with an exception for new lots created that are at least 25 acres in size. When subdivisions are clustered, a minimum of 80% of the subdivision is to be permanently preserved as open space with lots and roads clustered onto the remainder of the site. One difference in this draft uh, ordinance as compared to the current ordinance is that there is no transfer zone density permitted in the FFD. Transfer zone density is the permitted density in a transfer zone and zoning district that is allowed through the purchase and transfer of transferable developable rights or TDRs. Under the current zoning ordinance, permitted density in the FFD can be increased above the base density of one dwelling unit per 20 acres to one dwelling unit per 10 acres with the purchase of TDRs. This change is in line with the comprehensive plan which states the use of TDRs to allow additional units in the farm and forest district areas contradicts the intention of preserving these areas. TDRs may not be used to increase density in these areas. And as compared with current zoning, the boundary for the FFD has been reconfigured to reduce the existing residential development within the FFD. Also, it should be noted, the, the reconfigured FDEP FFD is predominantly located within tier four of the growth tier map adopted in 2017 in which residential subdivisions are limited to a maximum of seven lots. Agricultural preservation districts, um, article four of the, the draft zoning ordinance also includes a description of agricultural preservation districts or APDs, which are overlay districts, not zoning districts. An overlay district is superimposed on one or more zoning district or parts of zoning districts. The standards and requirements associated with an overlay district may be more or less restrictive than those in the underlying zoning district. Section 4-2 refers to the agricultural preservation district rules and regulations. Instead of repeating those regulations in the zoning ordinance, so if the rules and regulations are updated in the future, it won't re also require text amendments to the zoning ordinance. So the next, the next set of districts we'll be reviewing are the rural residential districts. Article five of the draft zoning ordinance includes descriptions and the minimum standards of the rural, the rural residential districts. 
These are areas that, that consist of existing small lot residential clusters, large lot subdivisions, as well as some farmland and forests located in the rural areas of the county. One of the primary characteristics of these districts is that predominantly they are located within tier three of the growth tier map, meaning that public sewage service is not planned for these areas, which limits the size and scale of residential development possible. There are some new zoning districts pr proposed under this land use category, and the origin of one of them begins with what we see in this slide. Under the current ordinance, a higher residential density is permitted with the purchase of TDRs within a one mile radius or one mile perimeter from town centers. The comprehensive plan exchanged the one mile radius slash perimeter policy from the town centers of Prince Frederick, Solomon, Slusby, Chesapeake Beach, and North Beach with a more clearly defined residential growth area. While the comprehensive plan retained the policy of permitting a higher residential density with the use of TDRs within a one mile radius from the town centers of Dunkirk, Owings, Huntingtown, and St. Leonard, it also stated that this policy will be reviewed during the update of the zoning ordinance regulations. During this update process, we reviewed this policy and decided with this draft ordinance to introduce a new zoning district that is meant to replace the one mile radius policy from these town centers and we're calling this district the Rural Neighborhood District or the RND and we'll get into more detail uh, w with that in a minute. So there exists a district known as the Rural Community District or RCD within the current ordinance but there have been some changes to the RCD with this draft. In terms of permitted residential density, specifically transfer zone density, the RCD in the draft is comparable to the density that can be achieved in the RCD under the current ordinance outside of the one mile radius. There is a slight difference, however, under the current ordinance outside the one mile radius in the RCD, you can achieve a density of one dwelling unit per four acres with the purchase of TDRs and the draft, the, tra the transfer zone density in the RCD is one dwelling unit per five acres. The RCD is intended to maintain a mix of farms, forests, and residential uses, retain historic and scenic areas, and protect watersheds. These goals are to be ch achieved in part through the mandatory clustering of subdivisions on parcels 30 acres or greater in size, with a minimum of 60% of the subdivision to be permanently preserved as open space and lots and roads to be clustered onto the remainder of the site. This is a, a slight strengthening of, this, of the clustering requirements as compared with what is required currently in the RCD outside of the one mile radius, which requires lots and roads to be clustered onto 50% of the, t of the site. And as stated previously, the Rural Neighborhood District, or RND, has been introduced to, re to replace the one mile radius policy from the town centers of Dunkirk, Owings, Huntingtown, and St. Leonard. So as you can see in the slide, the transfer zone density in the RND is equivalent to the current permitted density in the RCD within the one mile radius with the purchase of TDRs, which is one dwelling unit per acre. And there, are no, there is no required clustering of residential subdivisions and smaller minimum lot sizes are permitted than in the RCD. And so the decision on which parcels to include in the RND was based largely upon proximity to the one mile radius around the town centers of Dunkirk, Owings, Huntingtown, and St. Leonard. However, other factors were also considered. So with this slide, we're looking at the area in the immediate vicinity of St. Leonard Town Center. Rural residential parcels within the one mile radius, but to the west of Maryland to four here, were zoned RCD instead of RND because, those high, uh, because uh, the highway acts as a barrier between the town center and those parcels. And the R&D extends a little bit past the one mile radius to the north and south because Western Shores Boulevard to the north and Parents Grant subdivision to the south were more logical endpoints. So the Waterfront Community District is another new district that, and it was created to bring the zoning ordinance in line with the Waterfront Community Land Use Category 
as designated in the comprehensive plan. The WCD is intended to recognize existing long established residential waterfront communities along the Patuxent River, the Chesapeake Bay and their tributaries. This district is predominantly located within areas recognized as rural villages by the Maryland Department of Planning. The primarily small lot residential development, many of which created before zoning even existed, and water dependent uses characteristic of these communities is recognized as distinct within Calvert County's rural landscape. Um, so think of areas like Cove Point, Brooms Island, White Sands, Long Beach. The long established nature of these communities limits future development within this district. The comprehensive plan states that waterfront communities are not planned for expansion or additional growth and that TDRs may not be used to permit additional dwelling units in these areas. And that is reflected in the, permanent, uh, the permitted residential densities for, these, for this district, which are none, meaning subdivisions that result in the creation of additional lots are not permitted. However, a pre-existing parcel can still pull a building permit if the parcel is buildable and pre-existing lots can be combined to create a new lot. And the setbacks for this district are comparable to current setbacks uh, for previously recorded residential lots, 20,000 square feet or less in size. However, these setbacks would only apply if there were no setbacks previ previously recorded on a plat or if a new lot was being created from the com combination of other lots. Article 6 of the of the draft zoning ordinance includes descriptions and the minimum standards of the residential district. So as stated previously, the comprehensive plan more clearly defined residential areas as compared to previous plans and the draft residential district is closely associated with the town centers of Prince Frederick, Lusby, Solomons, Chesapeake Beach and North Beach. The permitted base densities and transfer zone densities are equivalent to the current permitted densities in the residential district within the one mile radius or perimeter of town centers with the purchase of TDRs. This is consistent with the comprehensive plan which states the density in these areas can be increased to a maximum of four dwelling units per acre. However, the ability to achieve maximum permitted, permitted density is dependent in large part on connection with sewerage service which is in part reflected in the difference in minimum lot sizes for single family detached development, 30,000 square feet without sewer versus 10,000 square feet with sewer. This is very relevant because a significant portion of the reconfigured residential district, including for example, the parcels along German Chapel Road west of Prince Frederick Town Center are located within tier three of the growth tier map which are areas not planned for sewerage service. For anyone in the audience tonight that has concerns about density and this reconfigured residential district, I strongly recommend you go visit the residential table after this presentation. We have planners staffing this table like Olivia, who've been working in our office for, she probably doesn't want me to <laughs> let you know how long, but trust me, she has, seen it all throughout all of these years. She can tell you I exactly about the difference between density and development that you can achieve in theory and the density and the development that you can achieve in reality. There are many layers that factor into density and development and the permitted density in a zoning district is just one of them. And I'll also mention that this reconfigured residential district recognizes existing agriculture and accommodates agricultural uses. Article seven of the draft zoning ordinance includes descriptions and the minimum standards of the commercial districts. Commercial development in the county is mainly focused inside town centers with some additional commercial development located in rural commercial zoning districts, most of which are located along the main highways. 
We also have a marine commercial zoning district intended for commercial development adjoining waterways that caters to marine activities and needs, an employment center district uh, adjacent to town centers. The comprehensive plan is silent on the status of the employment center district in the interim period between town center expansions. So the employment center districts, which are uh, proposed to become part of town center expansions in Prince Frederick and Owings, remain zoned employment center in this draft. And there are no major changes proposed for the Marine Commercial District in terms of where the district has been delineated as compared to current zoning. However, there have been a few Marine Commercial areas on split zone residential parcels that uh, were eliminated as part of the goal to reduce split zone parcels generally. The, comprehen the comprehensive plan uh, contains several action items relevant to rural commercial districts. To address the first action item, develop a plan for phasing out rural commercial districts that are vacant or underutilized. As part of th this process, we reviewed the current rural co commercial zone properties. It did not include undeveloped or non-commercial properties in the updated draft rural commercial district. And to address the action item, restrict the expansion of rural commercial uses and maintain a small scale rural character. We included new policies in the draft zoning or ordinance to be detailed in the next slide. So in the rural commercial district, the Department of Planning and Zoning may approve expansion of the use provided that such expansion is restricted to 50% of the square footage of the area occupied by the use at the time of the adoption of this ordinance. This policy is comparable to the current policy for expansions of non-conforming uses. And any map amendments which result in an expansion of the rural commercial district shall not be permitted. And the latter policy is not included in draft article six, but instead in draft article 30 in the zoning text and map amendment section 30-11G. Um, Article 8 of the draft zoning ordinance includes descriptions and the minimum standards of the industrial districts. There are two new industrial districts included in the draft zoning ordinance, the industrial mixed use district or IMU and the heavy industrial district or I2. The IMU provides for a mix of light industrial uses with compatible commercial uses such as recreation, entertainment, and re and retail establishments in part to promote the reuse of older industrial structures that may no longer be suitable for their original purposes. The IMU was created in part to accommodate existing conditions in industrial areas where development has been trending in this direction for a number of years via things like text amendments to the zoning ordinance, the Calvert County Industrial Park off Maryland 231 being a primary example. We believe that this is in line with the comprehensive plan statement on industrial areas that the intent is to allow limited retail and service uses in these districts and to reserve adequate and flexible space for high revenue generating uses that provide high quality jobs for county residents. What makes this map? What, what are you showing us on this map? What, what is that going to So uh, what you're looking at here, uh, this is a little bit north of Lesby and Go ahead, Mary. Right, and I was just about to get to the heavy industrial areas. So uh, the I-2, the heavy industrial district, it provides for a higher intensity uh, industrial uses than permitted in the light industrial district. The I-2 is a more appropriate zoning category for uses like nuclear power plants and LNG facilities, and the proposed zoning is limited to properties where those uses currently exist. We did not include a, a slide for, historic, for the historic district overlay because no major substantive changes have been proposed for historic districts in the ordinance. Draft Article 9, which addresses historic districts, refers to Article 57 of the County Code for Administration and Modifications. So in summary, with the proposed zoning districts and zoning map, we have the replacement of the one mile radius around the town centers of Dunkirk, Owings, Huntingtown, and St. Leonard with the rural neighborhood district. We also have a few more proposed uh, new zoning districts, the industrial mixed use district, the heavy industrial district, and the waterfront community district. Clustering required in, in the 
farm and forest district and rural community district on parcels 30 acres or larger. We have a new delineation of the residential district more closely associated with Chesapeake Beach, North Beach, Prince Frederick, Lesby, and Solomons. We have limitations on the expansion of uses in the rural commercial district, and the employment center district is to remain in place in areas proposed to become part of the Prince Frederick and, town, and Owings town center expansions. And I believe at this point we're going to uh, going to try to navigate the website and give a tutorial on how to navigate the zoning ordinance map. Thank you. Okay, so here we are at the zoning ordinance update webpage. And so we're scrolling down. Let me back up real quick, Will. So if you go to the county's website, you're going to go to departments, you're going to go to planning and zoning, you're, and you'll get a drop down. You go down to the zoning ordinance and you click on zoning ordinance update. So departments, zoning ordinance, and zoning ordinance updates. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Okay, so we're just going to scroll down here. You got your background, your purpose, your goals. And the draft zoning map is a bent, embedded here, but really what you want to do is click right here on this link, View Draft Zoning Map in a new browser. Proceed to site. And so for those of us um, who work with GIS, this is pretty intuitive, but if you're not, this is what you want to do to navigate all of the layers that are available on this map application. The bottom of the screen here, you see this uh, icon that says layers. Go ahead and click on that. And then here are all your layers that are available to work with. And so if you want to see how the uh, draft zoning compares with the one mile radius, go ahead and click on the town center one mile radius, a one mile buffer. We also have critical area overlay zoning that's relevant when we get to the critical area article. We have county historic districts. Here they are around Dunkirk. We have agricultural preservation districts. There you go. You've got your FEMA flood hazard information and that includes base flood elevations and uh, FEMA flood hazard zones and you can see some figures when you zoom in a little closer there. Where is the park? Right here, it's this large parcel. Okay, right there. Yeah. And you're calling that orange or oh, be beige or what? I would, uh, I would call it a lighter orange. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> okay. I just, yeah, it's no worries, no worries. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Could you just point out, because it's, I know where it is, because I played around with it, but it's really impossible to see on the screen from here. Point out to people again where the layer button is. Tell yeah, them. yeah, it's, it, you see this bar? See, it, you just go right to the bottom of this yeah. bar and it's you've got two options home and layers and so you you just click on layers it's it's right to the it's very hard to see back so this is what you'll get when you come to the page and there's two buttons home and layer click on layer is there a layer that shows the current zoning yes we're getting to that in a minute Greg so we've just recently added uh, the growth tiers uh, to the uh, map application. So that's a new one. You've got your future land use and another thing to point out, you, you see these bars to the right here a and what you can do with these is this is transparency. So if you want to see the transition from the future land use map to uh, to your draft zoning, And you can see that the, the expansion of the town center is not yet part of the draft zoning uh, as what's proposed in the future land use map here. And I'll just try that again in case you missed it. And uh, Greg, here's the, the current zoning right here. And it, it, it's a little bit uh, different um, compared to the other layers. It, it's delineated through these uh, uh, black lines, it's highlighted in yellow, and in the middle of 
the what you know when you work in GIS, they call these polygons. Um, and here, thought I lost my mouse for a minute, but right in the middle of the uh, uh, the area that would be zoned RCD, you can see the RCD label there, and um, it, it. So you can have the draft zoning layer. Uh, on and the current zoning layer, and that helps you compare the two um, in uh, in one viewing. Are you keeping consistent colors between like like this map that you give us and, and that? Well, these uh, the current zoning layer isn't colored. That so this is transparent. No, I mean in general. Uh, so whatever that orange is will be the same as the orange on other. For the most part, yeah. I, I believe we did. The FFD stayed green. The RCD. <laughs> when it comes to navigating these things from home, say tomorrow or the next day, is there a number we can call for, uh, for help? Yeah, you can give me a call. Okay, and that's uh, uh, eight, extension 8553? That's right. Okay, thank you. I had a quick question. Um, is there a glossary of terms? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, thank you for that. So. If you want to see the key for uh, uh, these maps, what you do is you click on the specific layer. And this, this drops down here. And you want to click on this. Uh, you see there's a little, uh, I guess, uh, maybe that's supposed to be a key, but it's got a little arrow. It's kind of small. But you click on that. There's your key. There's all of your colors and your symbols. <laughs> right, uh, you know they're they're pretty intuitive. FFD Farm and Forest District, TC Town Center, WCD Waterfront Community District, RCD Rural Commercial District. Yeah, it, it's once you once you get used to it, it's pretty intuitive. But it's, with all due respect, not everybody's used to it, and it might take a while to get there. For some of these things, like I was looking at four, it's hard. Like the color for I think it's uh, RCD and RD. Is so similar, and I guess if you zoom in, kind of like you, you're zooming in and you see the acronym. Well, the, what you're seeing now the, with the acronym, that is the current zoning layer. Now, okay. if you turn if you turn that off, and then you zoomed in close, each parcel for the draft zoning will have the acronym pop up on each parcel. And I, I hear you on the, uh, the the colors being similar. It, you know they're. The, the rural residential districts, it goes from your less intensive uh, uh, category with the RCD, it's yellow. The most, the more intensive, the residential district being um, uh, orange, and then the RND is, you know, a lighter orange in between. But one way to, if you're having a difficult time differentiating between the two, one thing to keep in mind is that the rural neighborhood district that is, um, that is located only in the proximity of the town centers of Dunkirk, Owings, uh, Huntingtown, and St. Leonard. The, the darker orange residential district, that is associated with the town centers of Chesapeake Beach, North Beach, Prince Frederick, Lusby, Solomons. And we're also going to try to work with our GIS staff to get a little bit more contrast. We, that came up last night with the meeting with the commissioners and the planning commission. I believe it was when we were talking about the industrial zoning. The blues were too close. So we're going to try to get some more contrast. If you can do that, that's, that would be wonderful if you could do that. But also, when you were showing, flipping back and forth with the old, I guess the current zoning and the future zoning, and it was yellow, um, if you can work on colors, maybe you could make that one a little bit more apparent too. Because I, you know, maybe it would be easier to see on my own screen. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe there's, I, yeah, there, there's pluses and minuses to the way that the current zoning is currently set up. Uh, if uh, the, the way it's currently zoning, you can see the the draft zoning in the background, so it's easier maybe to compare the two. Um, but maybe it would be helpful to have. Maybe it would be helpful to have a current zoning layer that was also. Uh, uh, you could toggle in and out. Like can you toggle the two right now for that? Uh, toggle current, the. Current and there you go. Is that what you wanted? No. no. Current zoning and proposed zoning. 
So, so I, I guess I'm a little bit lost on, on what you'd like me to do. Turn off the draft zoning. Yeah, and that's that's all we have right now. So. I think what Will was explaining is we want to get a little more, little more clarity and maybe there'll be another full-on zoning map because this has just been done so that you can overlay the two. So what we need is an actual current zoning map so you could look at one and look at the other. This was just to, to be able to overlay it. And I think as far as using it as an overlay, that works. But to see the actual zoning map, I think, would be worthwhile. That that's a good suggestion. We'll, we'll work with T.S. Yes. Well, one of the things you're doing, color is only so you're telling me transparency. But normally, I'm used to GIS from back when, but we used hash lines or things like that, so you can actually overlay them. It's transparent, not different colors, but you're totally transparent, and that way your poly is over there, and you decide. You know, it's left hashes for this one, but the old one and the new one has right hashes. Yes. And you can put, lay it. Can, can we can we adjust any on our own screen? And the other question is, we're zooming in and out, and I found that to be a real problem because I'm trying to look at the larger area. Once I zoomed in, now I can get down to where I can actually read stuff because it only pops up there. You're not right. popping it up out here. Mm -hmm. So I don't have that option to pop it up and see it. So I'm not able to print anything off that's useful. It's it's this big and it doesn't give me anything. Well, so you could call us and we can help you out with that. Or you yeah. could stop but in the office. General, sure. Yeah, and, and we can talk to our, our GIS division and we can make some adjustments. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It would be a lot easier, especially for somebody that hasn't used it before. And, and there's we have a question in the back. Yeah. Let's. All right, we're, we're just taking comments on the GIS now. So let this, that this versus that, you need this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and with the, uh, the, the, printed out, the printouts, we tried to align the colors with the current zoning as close as we could with the, um, the draft zoning, so it makes it a little bit easier to, to, tell the, to compare the two. Um, We'll definitely work with GIS to see what we can possibly do now. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's, this is more of a, an application than, you know, working, you know, in an actual, you know, the, the stuff that our GIS team is working with. Um, this is more designed for casual public use. But, um, <laughs> oh, I, I hear that. Um, just one last thing I wanted to, to show you guys how to do. If you wanted to look up a specific address, this is how you do it. See this I want to button at the top left-hand corner of the map here? Click on that, and then scroll down to the bottom. You see Property Finder Wizard. Click on that. Find a property by entering address. Next. And, oh... Uh, uh, I, 115 Main Street. <laughs> my, uh, my computer just went to sleep. Sorry about uh, that, guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, so, uh, you want to put in my address and say yours? No, his computer. I, I've, uh, <laughs> well, hold on. We oh, they got you. I've actually, got maybe you. this is, maybe this will work. They got uh, you in the back. There you go. Here we go. Next. And then what you want to do now is, it, for whatever reason, it's right at, it, it comes up at the bottom. So you got to scroll down to the bottom. Then you click next, and it takes you right there. How do you do it if you want to see a particular area that doesn't have an address? You know, it's a, a, a wooded area that doesn't have an address. Does it still have the, the intersection? So, 
So can you repeat the question? So say you just want to go like here. <laughs> oh, you're just you just talking don't about know the Yeah, you just use your mouse and you scroll in. Um, you can navigate it. Uh, it. It's you know how you would zoom in to. Uh, uh, well, I guess maybe maybe it's just intuitive to me, but uh, <laughs> but but yeah. So I'm I'm just I'm just scrolling with the scroll uh, t scroll wheel on the mouse. So you can scroll in with the scroll wheel and then scroll out. Yeah, there, there are a few options that you can search by with the property finder wizard, tax account, uh, deed reference. Got a few options. And you want to pop back out to the rest of the site? Well, I, I, I think I didn't have anything else I wanted. Okay, I just wanted to show where the, you, they could find the draft. Right, that. okay, yeah. the website. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, go ahead. So the growth tiers were a uh, land use tool that the state of Maryland passed um, several years ago, and we were required by state law to adopt. So they gave us criteria um, for fo four growth tiers. So tier one are um, areas that have existing water and sewer. Tier two are planned for water and sewer. Tier two are not planned for water and sewer. And tier four is farm and forest or preserved property. So um, that was a map that we had to adopt as part of our comprehensive plan by state law. And it limits the development of properties. So we can talk more about that if you have more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going back to the, the zoning ordinance update webpage. So we navigated down to the zoning ordinance draft map, and if you keep scrolling down, how to submit public comment, click on this email address right here, uh, mail to right here. Here's the links to the PDF copies of each article of the draft zoning ordinance. And then here is the schedule, which has yet to be updated, but it will be uh, as soon as we can do that. And what are you thinking in time frame for that? So we Hopefully tomorrow. It's just a lot more tedious and time consuming than you might think. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. Is okay. the notify me button up yet? Uh, I didn't see They it, were working on that. Yeah, so there, there's, there's a few other updates that are coming that just aren't reflected on the website yet. So there'll be a button that'll say notify me. Every time a pay, if you go on, click on that and sign up, you'll get an email every time we make a change to this page so that you can stay up to date with how we're making changes. Yes? Uh, Will, I'm impressed by your mastery of these various districts and what they include. But as you go through them quickly, frankly, it goes over my head. I don't remember them very well. I would find it useful for you all to provide a glossary of not just the name after the abbreviation, but a summation of what you can and can't do in that area and or what you're going to change it from and to. It's going to make it, I'm not as graphically oriented, I'm more verbally oriented. Sure. So I would find that type of description very helpful. So I think the chapters go a long way to doing that. They describe what the zoning districts are, what you, um, what the criteria are for density, setbacks, et cetera. Um, I think that would be very helpful um, to read that. And then with the summary that um, Will is going to be Post, that's going to be posted any day now, that'll help you with the comparison from what is current, currently permitted in those districts and what is being permitted. Yeah, like Mary was saying, in, in each of these articles, four, five, six, uh, seven, and eight, there are uh, summaries of each uh, zoning district that, I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at them, yeah. but that might help you out. And, and like she said, I think that comparison document between the draft articles and the current ordinance would also help you out. Okay, we're going to take one more question, and then we want you to have time to talk to staff. We're, we're definitely running out of time. Okay, yes. What's the difference in density allowable between a rural community district and a residential district? 
because so many of these areas were contained from rural communities to residential around Huntington, around Prince Charles. That, that's a great question to go to the residential table, and they'll talk to you. Also, about that's that. that's not completely accurate. It, it, again, um, the 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 lighter orange colors around the town centers of Huntington, Dunkirk, St. Leonard, and Owings. That is not the residential district. That is the rural neighborhood district, right. and that is equivalent to the zoning that you can do currently within the one mile radius under current zoning policies. The Prince Frederick, yes, that is the residential district. All this yellow, it can turn to brown. That's brown to me. I don't know. Your orange and brown look exactly how much of like I'm But all of this has gone from yellow to brown. And I'm wondering what the density allowable is between brown and yellow. More questions will be coming this, this way in the air. Okay. But that's the question. Okay. And so before we break up, though, before we break up, uh, we're not. Saying, I'm, I'm just saying before we break up with whatever we're going to do, there's a lot of information we haven't discussed at all. Sure. We haven't gone at all through the land use tables to tell us why you made the changes you made. That's you're a different also, chapter. You're also, we're, we're going to be, um, we're supposed to be going out to meet with all of our groups. Right. We should do that before we have to give you comments, okay? So we're talking September at least before we should be expected to comment on this. Uh, so we want initial comments on, you know, these draft. Like I said, there's never a hard and fast deadline on when you can submit comments. So we want to get some initial feedback on these first few chapters. We're going to take the summer. We're going to go out and talk to people. We want you to be reviewing the regulations, and then, then we'll get into it. So um, there's plenty of time. So it's not a final time, but if you give us a deadline, we can still submit comments later and you will consider. Yes. But here's the thing. We've got the 30th up there, Ms. Cook. And, and, and I committed tonight to three weeks. So. With three or four? Three. Let's do three. All right. Yes. That's fine. Because three the longer. From, are we saying three weeks from the 30th? No, I was giving you two additional weeks. So. It, you really don't. It's just that we need a deadline so that we can, you know, collect some thoughts and, yeah, move forward. So um, I'm going to look at my calendar right now. So one, two, three. How about July 21st? That's three weeks from the 30th. Three weeks from the 30th. All right. We will get it on the website July 21st. Okay, I think we're, we're done with the web page and we can go back to the PowerPoint slides and I think, are we ready to break yes, out to the I tables? Yes, I think we're ready to break out. So um, we have several different topics. We have residential, we have agriculture, and I forget what the third one is, commercial. So feel free to go ask questions. Will and I will be here. We'll be floating around. Um, you can ask us questions. And, and thank you for coming out tonight. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a very busy day. Yeah. So I was just hoping somebody there could say, go here. And I was looking for an If you could just do me a favor, if you haven't already, just put that down in writing because I've taken in a lot of information today. So having it. It follows up. It is. There's a television access. Yeah, if you, it would be really helpful if you could just put that in writing because it's just a lot for me to take so in. Yeah. Yeah. Hi.
Oh, thank you. So, so I mentioned in the um, the uh, slides that when the comprehensive plan was being devised, they based that waterfront community land use off of what not 100%, but primarily off of what are designated rural, um, uh, uh, rural villages by the Maryland Department of Planning. So that was their starting point. And, and they are a little bit different. Um, there are similarities. Um, so basically, town centers don't have to. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? It's not a craze. Oh no, no, no. no. That, it's just, yeah. If you, if, I don't know. If, yeah, if you look up rural villages, Maryland Department of Planning. If you look at that map and you look at where the waterfront community districts have been delineated, it's really close. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of people I, I think interested in, in because it's a new zoning district and they're they're curious and maybe a little bit concerned about some things. But I don't think that the things that are being proposed, it's not it, the district wasn't created in order to radically change. It was actually created to do more the opposite. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Overlaid, but they're Mr. Cook, because you were sharing the chance. Or can you unmute yourself? It's been so long since someone's asked. Ah, I'm the guy that's going to always ask you. <laughs> I have one I can write in on the back. I'm sorry. I don't even know if I've been a super. I haven't even checked if I've ever gotten to present tonight. Uh, updated position. You've got to be a lot of old people still. Yes. So yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no, the re reason is because, like I said, unfortunately, I've had access to the I would highly recommend that you at least, I know that you're going to be making changes in the properties, but at least the initial copy, uh, a person could go to the library for people maybe to check out and hug or something like that. But I strongly recommend that there needs to be printed copy because to me, tonight I just heard from the copy people that could get up on the phone. Or, you know, and the people that could come. And I think that uh, there should be some copies that are actually printed and distributed to people. I think that is a great idea. We will take that under consideration. Thank you for that. And the other thing that I've begun to hear comments on, and I know that you guys work in the field and you're familiar with sure. it, but uh, once again, the pace needs to be slowed down because uh, even to those of us that are new, we're still trying to comprehend, you know, what is the comprehension plan. So we're playing a constantly catch up. Uh, and the one thing that I would say is we could just get away from the timeline because it, it, it's, you know, if you want to do this, we understand it. I don't think there is, it really needs to be heated anymore because, you know, people are apprehensive I can about, see how that could be concerning. I can't, I, you know, hope, you know, the next meeting is here. And without giving them time, you know, one to absorb it. And, you know, I know that there are questions tonight. But I think that this initial part, that I, I would highly recommend you give everybody an opportunity to hear what their concerns are. Tonight, I did hear a lot of adjustments from the meeting last night, so, which was good. I'll However, be perfectly honest with you, you know, once that again, concern and addressing it is a little bit above my pay grade. Kind of um, I would I'll talk to Mary, voice their concerns. express what you should just express to and me, here, and, you know, and she, tonight I kind you know, a lot um, of just she would really be the person to tell you but once again, about maybe just getting feedback the realities from the public, of dealing. what do you think about this? What are your feelings <laughs> about it? You know, we want your input. Uh, and I know you well, have I, I sympathize. Have, you know, it doesn't sound like a pleasant but or ideal situation. But you are looking at this, and yes, we are considering these things, and that's why we're here tonight with you with your input. Um, those are just suggestions, you know, that I have, and I hope 
you know, that everyone's open. I hear that you all are open, you know, to to make this a better relationship. And so everybody may not be that's everything. But right now, I think that the, the citizens need to be heard rather than just to put on the presentation and say, this is it. Give them the opportunity a little bit. I, no, it's not. It's, than, I think you might you know, be able to, to be honest. Is is that maybe, maybe I'm not sure. I think that there are some. I think there, oh, there might be some be drawing tools. About so what are you open it up? Hold on. Well, Mr. Sucker, we um, have opened this up. Tonight is our public forum. Like we said, we are just getting started. Well, actually, I, and as we go through, we can I, intuitively, I keep thinking that I can bring it up with my laptop, but it's actually being controlled back there, so I actually can't. Hearings. We have the but, um, sections. But um, I think that are, there are some options to, to play around with drawing tools. To I can't confirm that. To have them but, um, with this information that we're giving out and to get their questions answered. So, as Will said, the, the time But yeah, saving, I don't, I'm, I would, I would doubt that that would be And we will kind of plan more opportunities into the schedule um, to give you all more opportunities for comments. So as we go on, if there are any other um, public forums or hearings that we need to add, we will be adding them. And, and as Mary said, you can invite if you want someone to come out and talk with your group or if you want to come in and schedule a time to talk with someone about some of your concerns, um, we will be opening up avenues to also do that. Oh, I see. So it's locked in. You can go boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Are there question. any other questions Again, anyone has what I've been that telling people like is... Hand? It really doesn't affect things. I was just curious yeah. if we got the better version. Uh, yeah, I would guess that I would guess that that's probably I know that the, the other maps that we use with GIS, they have that same step-by-step step that you're So that's, it's in line with how all of our other GIS tools function. So I'm guessing if that's the case, then maybe not. But yeah, but what, what I've been telling people, uh, if, if you have anything that you'd like us to address or take a look at, get it in writing and, and send it in an email because it's, I've got it, I've taken in a lot of information tonight, so it's a lot to remember. I mean, we good now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So, and sometimes um, that is the way it is. With I the, have a single family lot uh, south of Neal Estate, and my zoning has been changed from residential to RCD, actually, Rural Community District. I just forgot. I'm having a, it's not a as terrible time finding I think, but there is an, uh, what the difference There's is. There's a background layer in, in the, the map. And um, you can actually have the option to switch to aerial and street mode as your background. And that's located at the very bottom left corner of the map. I don't know what. Okay, yeah, you're, 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 that's right, I forgot you're the map nerd. I got to. I spent a lot of time trying to find that in the materials, and I just couldn't. Okay. Um, the zoning map that um, Will did show. Um, well, yeah, it's a huge document. The zoning is. We can look into that further. If you would like to give, um, email us your address, we can take a look at that for you. I'd be happy to, but can you tell the difference between uh, uh, residential and this RCD? I mean, why would I cut out a residential? Um, hold on just a second. The, the residential that we have now is within the mile radius of town center. So then that had to change the zoning for the RC <laughs> and um, the rest of the residential zoning to RCD. Well, I think so you've witnessed today that we are trying to be flexible with, um, with these uh, common periods and schedules. If you're not town center. You're, I'm trying to get the, hold on just a second. Carolyn's looking up your information. It's easy, it's all clear. And, yeah, I, that, that is really what we, end of pump point I think one of the things that we wanted to have in mind is before we get in front of uh, the public and start giving this presentation, have an idea of what some of the issues that, that the public want to address. So it, it, what, even though, you know, we didn't get it, hundreds of emails, we did get emails and it did factor into how we presented the information to the public at these very first uh, work sessions and public forums. So 
even though it, it may not have been ideal the way it was originally rolled out, it did serve some function. And and I, I think that, you know, we are trying to be flexible. And I, I think part of the, the thought process is, you know, at the beginning was, if you're aggressive, you can always take more, you can always add in a few, uh, a few more months to go over things that you went over previously. Um, that people, the public was, that wanted to explore more in depth. So the idea was never to do it really and get it done like Lady Spit. But, but I think that the reality is that this project is so huge. It's going to take so long to get through it, and it's just, it's going to, it's going to be a long process. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that we just have to go with the flow with that and, and really give people the time to digest things. I think you're, I basically think that, you know, you're more or less correct. And I think that uh, we're just trying to, to, to find like a nice equilibrium because we don't necessarily want it to take three or four years. But, but we do want to, I mean, we do want to give this a room to breathe. And what we really want, what we, what, what we really want is to get a, a good ordinance at the end of. What we really want is to get a good ordinance at the end of this process. That, that yes, that that addresses the concerns that that we have, that the public has, that the uh, board of county commissioners and the planning commission have. Um, it's and it, it's so many opinions that you have to. I mean, just getting this this staff draft out just within the office. There's so many <laughs> clashes of opinions. Just getting all of that worked out was. It took a lot of time, and then you open it up to the public, and then and everyone else, and it's just it's a lot to to take in. Yes. There's a the email address. Good eye. So the wetlands district was what it. It predates my time with zoning. It apparently goes back to the early 80s. Um, and Thank so okay. that was before Appreciate things it. like the critical no area regulations, the critical area, area overlay zoning, maybe some even uh, state wetlands protections. So that uh, wetlands district today is kind of redundant with all of the uh, uh, wetlands uh, protections that have come over the years. Yeah, and, and also county uh, Are there any and other questions critical or area. That so has? The, the reason why the, the wetlands district it just wasn't functioning as a real zoning district. It was redundant. It's just, and that's part of the process is finding these these things that are For redundant that are in the zoning ordinance. Us, and and, and when you can have, when you can start to eliminate have, things that you you know right, don't you need, it makes it it, uh, it makes it easier to navigate. To digest, um, to process, um, and and to use uh, so for staff and and for the public. Okay. So that's the goal. Yeah. I yep. mixed use. I know Will said that it's supposed to be kind of introducing compatible um, commercial uses with industrial uses, but when I look at the list of what's allowed. It's almost every kind of commercial use that, that's allowed in the town center. In fact, there's even an adult entertainment enterprises use allowed there, along with uh, taverns, bars, and nightclubs. And I don't see quite how that, that plus all the uh, these other shopping center, home improvement center, restaurants, including uh, drive through restaurants, it, it, it doesn't quite seem like it's really um, just going to be a nice little mix of commercial and, and industrial. Can you explain that or talk more about it? The differences that we were seeing with the uses that were being asked for oh, okay. so what is, and the problem that economic development was having was finding affordable properties for some of these businesses to locate. Um, of course, we want them to direct them to town centers, but we were finding that if someone's coming from a home occupation, 
and they've outgrown their home occupation going in, they could not afford property within the town center. The industrial areas were becoming a mixed use of um, commercials like we'll use, for instance, we have mullets um, in the industrial park in, in um, Prince Frederick down on 231. That became more of, it's not a complete light industrial use, it's not a complete heavy industrial use, it's more of a mixed use. We have the flex space where we're finding that the flex spaces are turning into more of these multi-unit um, uses. So that's where that came into consideration. I know Will is going to be preparing an explanation for that that you'll see um, coming up on our frequently asked questions. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions or comments? So just so that everyone knows, um, I mean, we have some people that were just joining us. We are going to be moving Hello, the sir. public comments for these sections out to July 21st um, to give you all a little bit more time. I think that's three weeks from now. To give you a little bit more time to get your questions and comments in. So please, if you have any questions or comments or... Anything that you would like to add, we would really like to hear from you. Please get those in to us. So we will be in the breakout room for a little while longer. Um, so we're here to take your questions. Randy, I see your hand again. Randy, can you unmute or did you have another question? Yes. Okay. Um, I submitted four questions. I, I thought they might be answered um, in, in a public forum, but will they be uh, posted on your... On Frequently your... asked questions, yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. I think we'll try to answer some of them, but uh, we'll look at them a little bit more thoroughly and we'll get those answered on the frequently asked questions. Okay. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you also. You take care. And again, just to give you all the website information again, if you'd like to go in and look at the maps or sign up for the updates, um, you can find more information at www.calvertcountymd.gov slash uh, forward slash zoning ordinance update. And you can also sign up for the updates at www.calvertcountymd.gov forward slash notify me. And I will ask the moderator to put that in the chat so everyone can have that information. Just to let everyone know, there was a workshop last night, um, the, a joint workso workshop with the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners that is available online on the county website under the Board of County Commissioners website under Meetings on Demand. 
that was a pretty good workshop. If anybody would like to go back and listen to that, there is a link to that. You can also find it on the county's YouTube channel. So that was the public, the joint public hearing, um, joint public meeting last night for the planning commission and the board of county commissioners. If you'd like to um, ask a question and you don't know how to raise your hand, if you are on the phone, um, to mute and unmute is star six, to raise your hand is star nine. Um, if you're using Windows, to un um, unmute is Alt-A, and to raise your hand is alt Y. And if you're on a Mac computer, to unmute is, for mute is Command-Shift-A, and to raise your hand is Command-Shift-Y. Mrs. Hooker, I see your hand again. Can you unmute? Rogers, I see that you have a question. Um, if you want to type it into the chat, if you can't unmute, I would be glad to answer your question. There's a question in the chat wanting us to explain the, water, um, the waterfront community district. So the waterfront community district. Okay. Um, they are existing mature residential communities that typically have predated zoning and the subdivision regulations. And their lot sizes are usually very small um, lot sizes, acreage wise, an acre or less. And they are not planned for expansion or additional growth. And TDRs can't be used um, to permit additional dwelling units um, in these areas. So, the Waterfront Community District is basically just identifying those areas that do not have further growth. Um, to unmute um, Ms. Rogers. If you hold on just a second, Ms. Rogers, I am getting some information on the um, waterfront community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have those lists of communities with me, Mr. Caps, but we will put those in the frequently asked questions for you to give you a little bit more information on where those communities are. Well, I do have um, those communities listed. 
posted from Coward County government, Coward County, Maryland website. Okay. And it is Dares Beach, Breezy Point, Drum Point, Chesapeake Branch Estate, Long Beach, White Sands, Scientist Cliff, Public, well, Public Forum today at 7 p.m. And I am the president of Breezy Point Association. And I am speaking on behalf of my community and we would just like to know what that means. Okay. All right, Ms. Plum, um, Ms. Rogers, we will definitely get that on the frequently asked questions for you. Um, because basically those areas that we are, that you have identified are, it, Communities that existed prior to zoning, like I said, they're small lot communities. They, most of the uh, lots there cannot be further subdivided. They can't use TDRs to achieve um, smaller lot sizes. So at this point, um, there's no further development that can go there. So the waterfront community districts are just those districts that, that have existed prior to zoning, and we'll give you more explanation of that um, on the frequently asked questions. Brendy, I see your hand up again. I'm sorry, Ms. Rogers, did you have something else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you didn't really answer my question. I'm sorry, if you'd like to repeat it. Okay, so. <laughs> I have to zoom in so I can see this. Uh, New Calvert County zoning ordinance is this new waterfront community district an avenue to increase taxes? No. There's basically not going to be any change to the waterfront community districts. They exist as they are now. These are just identified as basically areas which there are not, there won't be any zoning change, um, subdivision or anything of that nature. They're just those small, typically predated um, subdivisions and areas where they're already on small lots. Um, they're under critical area regulations that cannot be further subdivided. The density cannot increase in those areas. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> but we will put more info, we will have them explain that more and put more information out with that. In the comprehensive plan, it also talks a little bit more about the waterfront community districts. If you have a copy, um, or you can find a copy of the comprehensive plan on the planning and zoning website. You know what? I appreciate any information that the county can share with me as the president of Breezy Point. Um, and you have been very helpful. Uh, my email is B O B I E R O G E R S 35 at gmail.com and living in this community with the public beach i need to have a solid relationship with the county so anything that you can do to help me with that would be most appreciated no problem we will get that thank you for explaining that to me <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome Mr. Caps, if you also would like us to send you that same information, if you'd like to give me your email address, we can get that out to you also. If you'd like to put your email in the chat. Are there any more questions? Brenda, we saw your hand up. Did you have any other questions or comments? Okay, we 
have about five more minutes if anybody has any other questions. Um, if not, we will be going back out into the regular session for a wrap up. Um, but feel free to let us know if you have any other questions or comments. We did put the email addresses um, and the website address where you can find more information in the chat for anybody that sees it. And Mr. Caps, I do see your email address. Thank you. And we'll get that out to you also. Now, yes. I, I wasn't allowed to commute the whole time on mute, but I do have one comment about the uh, waterfront community districts. They allow um, short term rentals. Mm -hmm. use. And I, <clears throat> I think there are <clears throat> some communities that are fine with that, that are going to be selling that, and some that will have big problems with it. So I'd like that to be discussed further. Um, the fact that the county permits them may make it difficult for some of the communities to, to try to control that. So um, it's a it's a big issue for a lot of people. So um, if anything that you know, we could talk about with that would be helpful. Yes, and that's that's a good point, Randy. Um, we have we do get a lot of inquiries about these short-term rentals now. Um, as you know, it's a big thing. The VRBOs and things of this nature, um, bed and breakfasts and things are getting to be quite popular. Um, so we were looking at where we're getting these questions and where they should be permitted. There are a lot of these smaller communities that do have homeowners associations where um, we're hoping that they will get involved and look at it, look at their policies for homeowners associations and things of that nature. So um, we are open to any suggestions that anybody who lives in any of these communities may have. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Rogers, I do see your comment that you would like to address that too. Um, can you unmute me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so we in Breezy Point have a citizens association mm -hmm. and we they pay dues and we do have a private beach mm -hmm. um uh, what I'm struggling with as the president of the association is It states that our private beach is for Breezy Point residents and guests. Does uh, rentals in BRBO that that does not apply to them? Well, that is something that. And unfortunately, the county doesn't regulate homeowners associations and their rules and regulations. That's something that you all, as a community, this is something that you can take back to your community and discuss with your homeowners association. Um, and they are welcome to present something as a group as to how they feel about okay these yep. short-term rentals. And uh, also, even though zoning may permit it, if you have a homeowners association, then you have a homeowners association rules and regulations. We know we don't have an HOA. We have a citizens association, and but you definitely answered my question. I just yelled community. Yes, thank you. Amy, I see your hand also. I'm here. Just want you to know I have an email address okay. addressed to the chat. So I want to go too far. to my question. I really you. just wanted this Great. to be listen. Thank you. This is what we're talking about. Now go over here. Okay. Don't see it yet. Thank you for joining us for tonight's stream.